in Kotlin, you can create a class by using the class keyword and give it a name such as user. And we'll do open and close parentheses. Now, if you're not familiar with what a class is, a class is a reusable template. So we could actually have various different variables here. So I say variable user equals user. And then I could have another one. So var friend equals user. And there's another own different instances. So friend is a is a user and a this user object is a user. They're two different instances stored in memory. Now this class, this template per se is not doing anything. It doesn't do anything for us right now. So what we can do is actually define a couple of fields here. So we'll say a couple of properties. We'll say field, um, call this one first name. And this one's gonna be a string. We'll just initialize it to an empty string. Var last name. And we'll go ahead and initialize this one as well to a empty string. And now we have first name and last name. So if on the user, I would like to set that, I can say user dot, and that will allow me to access the two properties, last name and first name. So I'll set the first name to Don and the user dot last name to Felker. Now let's say we have another user. Let's say it's friend, of course. This one also has a first and last name. We'll set the first name here to Jane and the friend dot last name equal to Doe. So we have two different instances. Just because I've set the last name Doe here does not mean it overwrites here. These are two different things in memory. Now a class, again, has a it's a kind of a template. So you can actually, it can provide functionality as well. So we can actually put functions inside of this user class that are scoped to the user class. So what I might wanna say is print full name, and then it'll just be a regular function. And it's not gonna do anything, but it will print line to the screen and or to the output, which would be the first name and the last name. We can have another one in here that says print with a prefix, which then would maybe take in a prefix of some sort. And we could just call that prefix and that would be a string. And then when we call this function, we can do the same thing here. We would just say prefix and then we have perhaps a last name. Now, the way we would use this is up here, we might just call name, And if we go down here and do the same thing with friend, friend.printfullName, we'll actually hit two different pieces of output. So let's run this real quick. And what's gonna happen is we'll have two things printed to the screen. One is Don Felker, and that's called by the print full name function here. The next one is Jane Doe, and that's called from the print full name function as well here. Again, they're two different instances. The contents of the objects, which are basically instances of the class, are being printed to the screen with the print line function. Now we do have the print with prefix, so we'll get to that in a second, but let's also do something different here. So let's say we have a function called update name, and this update name takes in a new name and it's a string. And what this is going to do is actually update their first name. And so we'll say first name, and we're gonna set that to new name. And then what we'll have here is a way to update their name. So let's go back up here and say, you know what, maybe I messed up, I wanna update their name. And this is hypothetical and we wanna call this one Bob. And then at the same time, I'd like to user.print full name. And so if we run this again, what we'll see here is that the first object is Don Felker. Then we update the, call the update name function, which goes down here, sets the name to the new name. And then we call print full name again, it says Bob Felker. And then we go into the next user and this following the line sequentially procedurally, we see Jane Doe here. Now the same thing we can do, we can say user dot print with prefix and maybe I'll say Mr. And then in this one, I might actually say friend dot print with prefix and this one might be miss. And we, if we are to run this now, what we're going to see is of course, Don Felker, Bob Felker, and then we'll say Mr. Felker. And then we'll see Jane Doe and Miss Doe here because we're actually just printing with the values in here. So now this class is basically a template that we can use inside of our application. Now everything is stored inside the same file here. Now what you can do is you don't have to have this in the same file at all. So what we can do is I'm gonna open up the project window over here and you see we just have our main file. What I can actually do is create a file manually. I can say new Scotland. I say user.kt. And then what I can do is I can come over here and I can cut and paste this code into user.kt. 
If we go back to the main, you're gonna see that everything still works because we're in the same package. So it knows that it's going to look in the same package and it found the user class. Now this allows us to start cleaning up the code a lot because now I basically have a template called the user class here and a different file to do that for me. Now, what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna undo this. I'm gonna go back to main here. I'm gonna undo, undo this as well and come here and get rid of that Kotlin class. So we're gonna go back to where how we were before. There's actually a shortcut that you can use. When you put your cursor over class, the class name here, you'll see this little bulb. You can click on it and you can say create test, rename the file, or you can say move user to a separate file. Say, yeah, I'd like to do that. So right out of the box, by default, we were given this nice little thing that allows us to create a file. And what that did is it created the file for us and moved all the contents of that user class over there for us. So let's go a little bit further here and make one more method. And this method might print the length of the first name. So we say function first name length. And what we do is we're just gonna print something to the screen. And then what we're gonna do here is, we'll just take the first name and say first name dot length. And that's gonna print the length of the first name. So if we, again, this is kind of like a template, it's a class. Go back to main KT and let's print the length of the friend's first name. Friend dot print excuse me, length, first name length. There we go, and if we run this now, Kotlin will find the user class, include it here for us, so we're running with that user class. Run the existing code, which we've seen already, Mr. Felker, Bob Felker, et cetera. And then we're gonna call the friend first name length, and it's going to return four because that's the number of characters in the first name, which is Jane. Now, so this is a very simple class, but this is how you can create a class here in Kotlin.